going on YouTube? Um, I filmed these uh, skate clips the other week with the boys and uh, when I was out filming I was like to myself, I was like, these are really fun clips and then I was like, how can I then use these clips to then teach you guys something new that I haven't shared on this channel before? Uh, and so I am going to do that today. Uh, I will, uh, I think I'll do two things in like one video type thing just for Instagram purposes and that's how to make one. Uh, portrait Instagram posts, you know, you can get all the goodness into a portrait to fill up, to fill up as much landscape, landscape? To fill up as much, that's sort of country, to fill up as much, uh, <laughs> to fill up as much space as possible on the screen. So that way people, you know, maybe might stop and actually watch what you're uh, posting. And then secondly, I'll show you this uh, fun little effect in Adobe Premiere Pro that can, uh, you know, sort of stabilize your footage a little bit if you didn't uh, happen to use a gimbal like I did when I uh, filmed uh, these clips. Uh, but for now, uh, enjoy the rest of these uh, skateboard clips and then at the very end, we'll jump in to my laptop and I will uh, show you how to quickly just make some banging Instagram posts because that's what I'm about here guys, it's about, you know, getting out there, capturing, creating this stuff and then sharing it online and showing the world how much fun you're having because, I don't know, that's what I like doing and I've got pimples on my arms which is fantastic, but anyway, who cares? <laughs> Was the last one? Way better than that piece of shit. Let you know, pump it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we'll jump into uh, Premiere Pro uh, and we will get this uh, show on the road. I will start this screen recording right meow. And uh, yeah, so obviously once Premiere Pro opens up, uh, you wanna, you're going to want to go into this little guy over here. So you go to File, uh, New, uh, and then you're going to hit Sequence. Um, so now I've already got Instagram saved as a preset, but what you will hit here will be settings and then what you're going to want is 1080 horizontal and 1350 vertical and that is going to give you um, the the ratio size for portrait videos and Instagram uh, and if you do want to do Instagram stories you obviously will make that I think it's like 1080 by like 1950 or 1920 or something like that uh, so, but so for, for this instance I just saved mine as Instagram uh, because that's what it's for and once you're gonna hit okay 
Uh, and then what you're going to do, you're going to go and find the clips that you would like to use uh, in this instance. And um, for me, I am going to just grab just any random clip from here, from here, from here, from here. What's this? So that perfect, uh, perfect clip to use, to be honest with you. So we're just going to select both uh, the video and the track and I'm going to, uh, you know, command C and uh, copy that shot. And then we're going to go back into this new sequence and as you can see, it's got the little square that is for your Instagram and control V to get that guy in there. And now as you look, you're going to look at it and be like, oh man, there's some stupid ugly bars there that I do not want because you do not want that in your life. Uh, so you will click on the clip you'll double click on the clip and you'll come over to the effects control here. And what you're gonna to wanna to do, um, you know, depending on what camera you've shot with, you're gonna have a lot more play. I shot this with this Sony, but if you are to be using a GoPro, for example, you do have a lot more play if you are shooting extremely wide. Um, I'm just gonna hit the scale button here uh, and I'm gonna move this to about 125 in and that's gonna completely remove all those black bars and it's just going to be all pure greatness of the clip uh, and I'm going to drag it back to the very start and because now that you have zoomed in a little bit there is sometimes where like your subject may not be in the perfect part of the clip or the perfect frame seeing as you are grabbing a landscape clip, clip <laughs> a landscape clip and then cutting out the portrait bit uh, so what I like to do and for this instance you're going to come up to position and I'm just going to adjust this a touch and keyframe it the whole way. So you're just gonna, you know, come over here. And then to be honest with you, right there, Moose is in the middle of the frame. But as you can see here, he's starting to move out of the middle of the frame. So I'm just gonna slowly slide that over a little bit more and continue to do so. So he is completely center. And especially when he does do the pop shove of it, I want that to be completely in the middle of the frame and then he's gonna roll away happily ever after. And then if you were to play that back, looks a little bit something like that. And I actually probably could sort of fix up that part there, because you can't realistically see that. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, looks a bit better. And then what I even might do, I don't know how much room I have to play with, but I might even just adjust the actual height of the clip. So I might drag it down just a touch. Oh, um, nope, don't have enough room to do that. So uh, I'm gonna leave that as is because I haven't, obviously haven't zoomed in as much as I'd like to and I don't really wanna zoom in anymore. Um, but you could if you wanted to, so you could have that little bit extra play. Um, but yeah, so this shot in particular, I shot hand, uh, hands free, hands free, hand held, sorry. Uh, and there's not a lot of movement to it, right? But if we were to grab another clip, for example, so this is for uh, the warp stabilizer. So if we were to grab, we were to, um, so Premiere Pro does have this, uh, you know, pretty cool uh, effect. Uh, it's called warp stabilizer. Uh, and it can get you out of trouble a lot when it comes to stabilizing footage that is a little bit shaky. Uh, you do need to keep in mind that it is obviously a computer based effect and it's a lot easier if you do just shoot with a, gimbal of some sort in the very beginning but we're going to come over here to um the effects tab and we're just going to search warp stabilizer it's gonna be this guy right here but what i'm going to do first i'm going to go quickly through and keyframe this clip uh so that uh he is where exactly where i want him to be throughout the clip Alrighty. now that i've uh now that i've done that and i framed everything how i want it to be i'm just going to file I'm just going to copy that again so we can have a comparison next to each other. Um, and now you do need to keep in mind that this warp stabilizer can sometimes go a little bit crazy. <laughs> um, but, and it does take a little bit to actually get it to be completely stable and stuff. So it will take a little bit of time. Um, so we'll just uh, chuck it on as I have and uh, we'll just simply wait. Um, how have you guys gone? Uh, what's new in your life? What is it? Uh, today's a... Today is actually the 25th of uh, January, so my birthday was yesterday, turned 26, so that was pretty fun. Um, yeah, I almost hit 100 subscribers, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, been doing this YouTube thing, you know, quite frequently over the last 
the last six months, you know, like pretty full on. So, um, yeah, so thanks to all you guys. Uh, new subscribers, old subscribers, some of the day ones. Uh, Steph Moss back there, you know, she always likes my videos, comments on them, what a legend. She's a good woman. She looked after me well and truly well on my birthday as well. Um, yeah, this is taking a lot longer than what I thought, so we'll just come back uh, when it's all done and then we can watch the two of them. We've uh, rendered it, uh, we can watch it, and it goes a little something like this. <laughs> So as you can see, it is pretty buttery smooth and it's very nice, but it has punched in a little bit too much, which doesn't really work for us. Uh, but for a comparison, here is the original clip without any uh, warp stabilizer applied to it. And as you can see, there is a lot of extra camera... Oh my god, computer, please, for the love of god, just play normally. Uh, my computer's having a bit of a meltdown, <laughs> so I will, uh, I will just show the two side by side. Um, and then you can be the judge of which clip you do like best. Uh, obviously, the warp stabilizer does punch in a little bit more. You do miss the actual flip, uh, the big spin at the end, while the other clip has a bit more shakiness into it. And uh, you do get to see it. This is probably the, that's actually a really bad example of using warp stabilizer. Um, it can come in like really, really handy uh, when you do have like a fairly steady hand. Um, but for today's example, maybe it's not that great. <laughs> oh, God damn. Tutorials with Mitchell O'Connor. They're not the most educational, that's for certain. No, but the uh, portrait one was pretty good, I guess. But anyway, uh, if you do like this video, let me know. If you do want more tech type things, I'm not exactly the fucking, I'm not exactly the king at Premiere Pro, but I do try my very best. Um, let me know, I don't know. If you guys enjoyed this one, make sure to like it. If you wanna subscribe, go for it. Maybe you can be the number 100 subscriber to the channel and then I'll, think of something to do for my 100 subscriber freaking video or something or other. I don't know. It'll be something cool. I'll think about it, I guess. That's if it ever happens. You could all unsubscribe after this video and then I'm back to where I started. Who knows? But regardless, get outside, capture, create, have fun, pat puppies, tell your mother you love her, everything. Else.